Have you ever been so close to someone, usually of the other gender, that when you talk to them, and hug them, and embrace them, they make you feel better, but then you feel much worse soon after? Well, you should be careful. You may have just encountered a feeder. A feeder looks just like any other human. They can be of any social group or race, and can pretend to worship any religion, though they don't actually believe in such things. A feeder looks, breeds, breathes, everything, just like a human. Well, except for some small things. Feeders are good actors. They pretend to feel like we do, and eat like we do, when in reality, we are their prey. Feeders feed off of our sadness, and that's why they can make us feel better so easily by temporarily stopping their feeding. However, don't be fooled, because they want more. Feeders generally target lonely people who already have a difficult time in life. The ones with no friends, the ones who had been through tragedies, the ones who just don't fit in with others. And of these people, all of these people are easy targets for feeders. Feeders generally choose a single host and feed off of them over and over and over until they can't take it anymore or they get away from the feeder. Feeders can breed with humans, but oftentimes because of the mixed genes, suffer from mental retardation or severe mental illness or even the child itself being a feeder, which is definitely not a good thing. Signs that you have a feeder are 1. Bad things happen after they comfort you. 2. They look really young for their age. 3. They eat very small amounts of food or a ton of food, oftentimes anorexic or way overweight. 4. You have a child with mental retardation, another serious mental illness, or has odd behaviors. 5. You fall madly in love with them. 6. They always know when something bad happens. 7. You start to go crazy. 8. It acts as an outcast, but is actually very social and communicates well with others. 9. It stays away, ignores you, and goes to someone else if bad things stop happening, or you are unaffected by these things. 10. You move or go away for a long period of time, and they don't contact you. 11. If you are a relatively happy person, and you go up to what you believe to be your feeder's friends, and the feeder treats you like garbage. Oh, and one more thing. Never, ever, kill a feeder in your home. You cannot kill a feeder in your home, because misery will remain in the home. The slightest bit of sadness will make the tiniest, microscopic speck of it grow. Then, once it is large enough, it goes into one of your meals or crawls into your mouth, your nose, or someplace near the pelvic region, and turns you into one of them, and leaves you with only the feeling of memories. In the time when witches and innocents were burned at the stake, and murdered in many other ways, a witch from that time wanted revenge against the people who killed her brothers and sisters and the many innocents. So. She secretly worked on a spell, married a man, and had a child, whom she used the spell on to make the first feeder. She thought she was doing the child a favor by making him unable to feel all the pains and cruelties of the world. He was meant to feed off of and breed with Christians. 
This is what he did. And over time, more feeders came into the world. After about a hundred years, when the feeders got clumped all into one area, conflict started, so they eventually started to migrate over, eventually not feeding off of Christians alone, but people of all religions. Now, their prey does not need to be of a certain religion, nor do they have a preference. All they want is someone they can feed off of.